My three-row SUV gets three kids to three different sports. Mom, let's go. Luckily, Exxon Mobil Synergy Supreme Plus Premium Gas is three times cleaner for better mileage. Go on. Find a station at Exxon.com. Synergy Supreme Plus Gas compared to Synergy Regular Gas and Port Fuel Injected Engines. Benefits based on continuous use and may vary. Everything you learned in history class was a lie. Well, maybe not everything, but they skipped the best parts. Introducing Stupiracy, where stupidity meets conspiracy. Ever heard of the Olympic marathon that nearly killed its runners? Or the time a pope put another pope's corpse on trial? Join me, Scott Rizzuto, and Tim McKernan as we uncover the most outrageous historical moments and mind-blowing conspiracies you won't believe actually happened. Tune in to Stupiracy for your weekly dose of historical absurdity. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Remember, history is dumb, but laughing at it is smart. Yes, it is the Friday, uh, well, the sports talk hour of the Friday Fun Fest. The Friday Fun Fest doesn't officially start till 4 because yeah. that's when we bring in a uh, musical guest. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're not going to give it away, but we have a fantastic musical guest uh, this week. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> Uh, last week we let Manny uh, choose it. He choose uh, chose uh, the tribe of Quest. Tribe called Quest. Tribe called. Oh Quest. yeah. Quest. As <laughs> that form of music goes, it was pretty good. Yeah, they're they're. I they're, could put up. With it. I enjoy. I think them. he was he was being nice to me. I, uh, he was he was being. He didn't give me the <laughs> hardcore stuff. Plus, if you bring the hardcore stuff it's hard to use as bumper music on the fine family show that we're right. presenting here right and sometimes and i love tribe called quest so don't get me wrong mm-hmm. but to play them on radio is a bit difficult because you have to find clean versions you know, of the song here's my biggest problem with tribe called Twe- quest the title <laughs> what we just call yourself the tribe or the Beatles or some damn thing. We don't need this long, elaborate title. And it's A. It is A tribe. A tribe called, called Quest. Quest. Yes. Okay. How about A tribe? And just forget the rest of the crap. Well, there is a- or or Quest. Has there ever been a group called Quest? Well, that was uh, Prince's nightclub. Remember over here, we yeah, call that I know the Quest. It was, but he didn't. He never had a band called Quest. Not with that him, I'm did not he? that I'm no. aware of. Not that His I'm aware failed of. band here. Yeah, he uh, he had the one group uh, with the with the gals. I can't remember if that was Quest or not. I don't think it was. I don't know. Anyway. There's just got to be something easier. Make you it know, simple, the like chip inks. Bunks, you know, the some damn bunks. thing. You know, it's it, it's a lot easier if you right. just come up with a name like they back back in the day. Too many know. words. Yep, especially for us old time. So what you're saying is, if your group's name requires punctuation, it's too long. <laughs> yes, or if it's just you know, yeah. Up, yep. up, up. What are you doing here? Uh, if it requires. You know, pronoun, you know, mm-hmm. uh, prepositions. If it requires there prepositions go, yeah. or something, uh, then, then then I don't like it. Then I don't like it. Okay, so today, before I came here, I went to a, they had a noon press conference to introduce the boxing card that is going to be held April 13th at the New Armory. Oh. And uh, it's a, it'll be the first boxing card since 1973 to be oh, held wow. at the Armory. Okay. And uh, they had uh, some of the main inventors there. Caleb Truex was there, too, just to give it his endorsement. Because some media want to talk to him about his championship fight next Friday in Vegas at the Mm -hmm. Hard Rock. Mm -hmm. A week from Friday, which is a week from today, I guess. Uh, And uh, he was there. But you haven't been in there yet, have you? No, not since. You should see this place. Fantastic. You should see what they've done. I saw some of the news the coverage way, during the Super Bowl, but I have not set foot by in By the yet. way, Ned, the guy that bought the building, mm-hmm. now I'm sure he got a good price on the building because he'd just been sitting there like a turkey for years, but man alive, no public money. Zero. Really? His own money. He's the developer. And... I was told that they they offered him the like the historical building tax break. Yes, and he said no. Why? He, I he just doesn't want to hear any. Abuse oh, I see. About sure. Anything. Yes. Okay. You're taking a public handout. He paid it. He said, this "Listen, is, I took care of it." Okay, deal. gotcha. But they have. Have you? Were you? Do you ever park in there? I did one time for a with Vikings the dirt game. Floor. I was yes. sitting in there with a dirt floor. It's mm-hmm. an old parking lot. And the armory, and now it that down it the whole thing's redone. It's gorgeous, 
you still got the old field, but they have the concert area has uh, dozens of rows of chairs. But the bar on each side oh, man. is 80 yards long. No. The bar on each side is the length of the building, the bar on each side. So you get a concert there. You're not going to have to stand on a line for an hour and a half to get a beer like you do it at, at, I don't know how many bartenders they have working, but they had another sold out one last night, another concert. Apparently mm-hmm. every concert they've had there, they've basically sold out the building. And I uh, wonder if that's a, a lot because people want to see the new well, inside. Well, it of the, could yeah. be, but they had, I think they had somebody called Jagged Edge or something okay, last sure. night. I don't know who they were, but that's another hip hop artist. Well, they got a guy booking booking it i i the booker i didn't formally meet him but i he was talking to the owner the guy who uh, did the thing and uh i said get get my guy nathaniel ratliff in here come on we can fill well, it how up how many does it seat did, did they, they say said it? they have about six thousand five or six thousand but is it's too a, big is nathaniel ratliff too big for that well you know he's done first avenue and now he's bigger i i think it's uh, it is a, a perfect sized building. You know, it's not mm-hmm. you can you can fill it, but it's a it's absolutely the perfect boxing venue that they've had that they've ever had sure. here because you can you can't have boxing matches at the X or Target Center. They're too, too big. damn big. Yep. And there was and there's and you can't have them in some you know the casino. God love them. Who wants to drive to Inkley to watch a boxing match? It's a city mm-hmm. event. Mm-hmm. And, you know, your crowd is a city, pe- folks. And this is like, okay, you put the ring in there, you probably put 4,500 people in there if you need it. Perfect. So when outside of boxing then and concerts, what other things are they going to try to host I there? I bet they're going to have a whole lot. What they're going to have is a whole lot of corporate thing, party parties type of and things stuff like that. where you got the bar mm-hmm. from here to there. And, you know, got a stage, you can get a music in there uh, yeah you know, you know, i don't know i suppose they can cater anything you want but uh it's uh it's fantastic and you know who was there today senior tony oliva really because the headliner is the uh that james kid is going to be the headliner here and tony okay this kid's grandmother is gordet oliva's best buddy no so tony says i knew this kid before he was born sure <laughs> you know right. he knows him and the one of the promoters is louis de cubis who's uh you know his dad was a doctor and he died a cuban and his louis a boxing guy in fact louis when duran was in town six seven years eight years ago Louis was with us when we drove. I drove with him down in the limo down to Rochester okay. with Roberto, which was a kick. And uh, but Louis is uh, Tony knows the dad from the Louis de Cubas. He, he also has known Louis de Cubas since he's a little kid because his grandfather. Coach Tony in Cuba. Holy cow. Yeah. And then the de Cubas is, then Louis came over here. Louis's father came over here and was a doctor in Edina. And Louis became a boxing guy. So and, outside of his connection with the two fighters, is he a, is he a boxing fan no, himself? No, he does, says he doesn't like to watch it because it, he cringes when he sees people get hit. Oh, okay. He says he, he roots for this kid. He loves this kid. He'll watch it on if it's on TV. But to be in person, he doesn't like it. Because he doesn't, he and his wife, neither of them can like it when if they go to see this kid fight and he gets hit, you know. Because so, they, yeah, they they've they, got a personal uh, connection the, to they him. They don't have the stomach for mm-hmm. the thing, but uh, yeah, he's. But there were eighteen people there that introduced themselves to Tony, or Tony, Tony knew them all. Tony knows everybody. <laughs> Tony knows them all. So I'm going. They all. I mean, not from just being a player, but I know your dad's mother. Because we and, used yeah. to grow up in the same neighborhood. <laughs> so going going back to the armory, because I'm trying to picture it. Is it going to be a logistical nightmare to try to get in and out, whether no, you're no. parking or what? Or no. are there places to park well, there's nearby? A huge lot right across the street that said not for public parking, but I don't know whose it belongs to. I don't know. It's a 
it, it must be some business downtown that doesn't need the parking spots at night. They can maybe start charging okay. 10 bucks or something, but, uh, it's really, really good. And the, it's an army building, you know, right? It was made armory. Right. You couldn't knock it down with a bazooka. These walls are <laughs> made for life. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a real sturdy place. And it's, uh, they did the roof, and uh, it's uh, it's going to be fun. It'll be great for boxing. He must have deep pockets because uh, he did that roof, and I'm assuming he did the floor, too, right? Oh, yeah, the floor. Is, but he did everything inside. Yeah. yeah, and it's all refinished inside. And I heard you say he didn't accept any. No public money. That's amazing. No public. Who is this guy? I want to kiss him on the face. <laughs> uh, I better, I'm going to talk to him later, and we're going to. I'm going to get that out there. So but, when I was a kid in the '70s, and I was watching AWA, were any of the matches in the armory, or yes, were they all yeah, in the convention No, no, a lot center? of them were in the armory. Uh, the, the auditorium would uh, the the auditorium building that was the big building. And for instance, when the Lakers were in the playoffs, yeah, for two weeks, the sports show would be at the auditorium. They, so they could, they'd have to go to the armory and play. So they they generally played in the auditorium because it was a, considered a better building. Yeah. But they'd get their arse thrown out of there whenever there was a <laughs> sports show or right. anything like that. They'd throw them out and they'd end up playing in the armory. That convention center, that auditorium, that was a fun building. But, yes. But we needed the new one. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we, we did, but. But the uh, our armory was always like considered the second building, but it's a great old historic building. And you, as I said, it's fantastic now. You got to go see a concert there. It's great. I, I imagine it's great. I haven't been there yet because I don't think Jagged Edge was my kind of deal. I don't know who they. Are. I don't know who they are, but it sounds. So you think Tribe Called Quest should change their name to a Tribe? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a Tribe. Well, that's good. We always just refer to them as Tribe. Yeah, well, that's good. Why don't they just call themselves a Tribe? I don't know, but you you crack just me up. You yeah. crack me I up. I want man. simplicity in my life. <laughs> yeah. Simplicity. Yeah, we'll be back. <laughs> Tribe? A tribe? No, this is Jagged Edge. Oh, really? Jagged Edge. Works. Let's get married. Okay, Ooh. this is uh, this is sexy music. This is not <laughs> hip hop either. Well, there's a remix version that was very popular that he did okay. this, I, but right. that's not very I'm clean. I'm not sure that was them. Somebody just mentioned it to me. I didn't double check. <laughs> okay. I would sure call this R and more R&B. What's on your mind? You got anything for me? I do, and I don't mean to throw you a curve here, but it happened last night in Chicago, and I am still in awe okay. at the Blackhawks game. Okay. Tell us about and, it. Well, you know what happened, right? Yes. Scott Foster got pulled out of the stands. Mm -hmm. He's a backup goalie. Uh, he took like what was it seven how many shots seven shots seven shots 14 that he turned minutes away. seven shots <laughs> um but and, he's got a wiki page who is the who are the idiots out there that put a wiki page up immediately that's hilarious yes but what blows me away is there any other sport that is this damn dumb <laughs> I mean, well, look at look look what happened uh, last year. I remember it was last year, the year before with the Twins. We just ran out of pitchers. We we're pulling yeah. guys out of the outfield, yeah. and, and you know, it's you a fake, different deal. You fake your way through it. Same with a You're quarterback. Fourteen to two, you just bring in a. You exactly. lose a couple quarterbacks. There's always a running back who yeah. thinks he can be a star, and you can yeah. fill in. And every other sport that I can think of, there's an existing player on mm -hmm. the team ready to take over. What the hell with the NHL? Well, and man. not only do you only have two goalies, I learned this this morning, I had no idea, but the Scott Foster character, he he could fill in for either, e one, yeah, either he, team. He sits in the back with his pads on. Yeah. And he said, I heard the quote, he's done it like seven times this year in Chicago. Yeah. But they have other guys do it too. There's other, it just happened to be the night that they needed one. But the here's the deal, Kenny. If you have three goalies, then the one guy's just sitting around for months, so they don't, you know, yeah. they, it might be some, they don't want to carry around a, a just a 32-year guy and no chance to play. Right. So, but this is, it used to be much better in the days when they were really cheap, and everybody had one goalie, and the guy <laughs> would sit, everybody had one, and if a guy got hurt... Some guy who was, they wouldn't even have him ready. He'd have to come down out right. of the eighth. Sometimes they, like, said, anybody here ever play goalie? And they'd come down. Such was saying earlier, he was at a Fighting Saints game. As a, I don't know how old he was, yeah. but 
They did. They pulled a guy out of the stands. They yeah. said, does anybody play goalie? And yeah. Joe said he might have been on beer three. He has no now, idea. I, I remember when the replacements, they couldn't find Bob because Bob's <laughs> drunk somewhere. Yeah, right. They're like, does anybody know our songs? Who can play guitar? <laughs> and they'd bring a kid up and they'd play uh, play a song or two. But with this uh, situation, Patrick, I was talking to Chet about this this morning. And he goes, think about it. Any other sport, uh, if you said, hey, we need a pitcher, any volunteers, he goes, five hands would go yeah. up, right? But in hockey... When you're in the locker room and and they say, "Hey, we need a goalie. Any volunteers?" <laughs> no, nobody. Yeah, right. go you're up. not going to be. Nobody. You know, and you're Judd, not going to be Eric Stahl and no. say, "For the sake of the team, I'm going to play goal." Well, like Hell Judd up. said, "What do you think they're going to put Dumba in?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's like no. good point, Judd. No, and but the, the Mackey made a real good point today was that the one, the only comparable position in sports is uh, catcher in baseball. Right. Oh, you know, there's another you know, one. Yeah. You, if you run out of two guys, they almost had that situation the last twins. night in Seattle. Oh, I was going to say the Twins Zanuno, a couple of years ago. Zanuno was supposed to play, and he got hurt during the day or something. He couldn't play. And then the catcher that was catching took it in the back of the head when he was wow. in the third inning. Or right. took it on a hand in the third yeah, inning. Yeah. Almost broke his well, hand. Well, the Twins were in Chicago a couple of years ago. Maurer was DHing. Redmond was behind the plate. He got hit on the ear, and Maurer had didn't, to come in. Didn't es- Escobar catch an inning? He might have. I'm not sure. I don't think Maurer has been behind the plate since he had the concussions. Because this was, I'm, this was like 07, yeah. something, oh, like okay. oh, something like that. 07, 08, something like that. But I remember that because Redmond... Eddie Escobar caught an inning or two, but he might have been... They might have done it intentionally to see if he could do it. I got an idea. How about for the XFL, they designate an emergency punt return. <laughs> Go on in there, kid, and get yeah, it done. Well, they might do something like that. But yeah, it is a wonderfully novel thing about this. Judd says uh, the, guys, uh, the guys for the Wild usually just hang out uh, up in the press box. They get a free meal out of the yeah. deal. They watch yeah. the game. They go home, and, and well, it's we over. Had a kid, we had a guy who got to dress for the game because the Wild didn't have a backup. Uh, somebody, so he actually got to sit he was on the sitting bench. On the bench. Yeah. But uh, I, I talked to him, but he didn't ever get in. But he he got to sit on the bench because the number the backup goalie was hurt. So I'm just I'm at odds with the whole thing, and I'm baffled and amazed all at the same oh, time. I think it's, you know who we should have? Cool, Crisco. Put Crisco in the net. They'd never That's score off thinking. of him. You just have yeah. a big fat guy in there. Well, you know what? That's well, not a I bad think... idea. But have you seen what goalies do when they warm up? Have you seen them no. during the pre skate? They go from knee to knee to knee to knee. I mean, down and up and down and oh, up. Man. This guy did it, play at Western Michigan. He was, a, but I mean, he was just good, yeah. just no, the warm okay. up alone on getting loose and limber and going from your knees to back up on your skates again. That would kill me. Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd be uh, done in 10 a, seconds. Right. There's a very good SI story out right now on SA.com of his beer drinking buddies who he plays in the beer league with being right <laughs> down the street in the bar just having it's the time the, of their oh, lives. God, I can't even playing, imagine. Uh, That's he's cool. Playing. Yeah. And it's, he just got done. Didn't he say he just got done uh, having a shutout his last game <laughs> earlier in the day or the night before. So it's basically like the Mark Wahlberg movie where he, uh, Vince Papali, where he played for the Eagles. All of his buddies were at the bar watching him, <laughs> you know, return kicks or whatever. Yeah. Well, yeah, that wouldn't be a good job either. Returning. It, anyway, kicks. that was pretty cool last yeah. night. All right. We're going to, I think we may honor him with a certificate later today. Too. Oh, okay. good. The, the imaginary certificate. <laughs> No markets today, right? Actually, we do. Let's step aside for a quick moment. Uh, Sports Talk will be back, and now we're going to head out east and get the Your Money Now report. It comes to us courtesy from Owatonna's own Federated Insurance. Here is Bruce Vale from the Wall Street Journal with Your Money Now. I have all the latest on ShopRite and Kroger today, your market report coming up. Uh, The markets were closed today for Good Friday, so we do not have any numbers. We'll take a long weekend and head back to work on Monday. Airport TSA agents are beginning to take a closer look at some of the food items you have in your carry-on bags, though the increased screening at security checkpoints is not yet an official policy. In the battle over land in the American West, the Cowboys appear to be losing to hikers. The Wall Street Journal says ranchers who rely on public land to raise cattle say they have shrinking access to grass and water because of an array of regulations. Government officials say they are protecting natural resources or giving more access to the public for hiking and other activities 
that fuel the fast-growing recreation industry. Over the last four decades, the number of cows grazing on public lands has dropped by nearly half, but the Trump administration plans to lessen some restrictions on public lands that could restore access for ranchers. I'm Bruce Vail with your money now on 1500 ESPN. Okay, Bruce, we thank you very much. Have yourself a nice weekend. We'll chat again on Monday. Checking traffic here. This report sponsored by Firestone Complete Auto Care and the outbound stomp on the West 94 Hot Mess Express. Not too bad. Light delays between 610 and the Crow River, but it's only 12 minutes or so from the Fish Lake split up to 101. Westbound 62, you know it. It's bonnet to boot. Lindale over to Tracy. Westbound 494 also suffering from a slow and go flow. Portland out to West Bush. And over on the uh, east side, you'll see minor jamming northbound 35E from the uh, Eyed Mill Corner into the Capitol Interchange. Firestone Complete Auto Care. Keeping cars running newer, longer. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. So I'm amazed that the Holy Roman Church still has enough clout in New York City to close her down, close down the markets, the financial markets on Good Friday. So I had to look up to see who the the guy, who was running the operation. Right now, who's the mm-hmm. guy the, running the New York Archdiocese? A good. A uh, German fellow named Timothy Dolan is running. They still have a good Irish Catholic running the uh, diocese there, and they can still close down the markets on Good Friday. There isn't the NBA plays, the NHL plays, Everything. baseball plays, but, but they still close down the markets. Yeah. Uh, so they still got the clout for that. And I keep telling, I've reminded you guys this on every Good Friday. The reason I think that I'm probably still in pretty good shape <laughs> yeah, yeah, is that back in the 70s, I was in there for a Twins-Yankees series. Started on Thursday. Season started on Thursday. They took Good Friday off. <laughs> and my heathen friend Fowler wanted me to go see Behind the Green Door oh. on Good Friday. <laughs> oh, and I my. said, I draw the line. My, <laughs> my <laughs> Irish mother would be doing circles in her grave if I went to behind the green door on Good Friday. So I didn't go. I might have had a few cocktails. I might have eaten a steak, but I didn't, didn't go, go see, see uh, behind yeah. the green door. And so. we should clarify, in, by pretty good shape, you mean in good standing. When you said, I'm in pretty no, good yeah, shape. I yeah. mean, yeah, I'm okay. Hey, hey, what? How could we possibly put you in through the pearly gates? And I'll say, hey. Hey, 1976. I got something. I got this. I did not. I refused to go to behind the green door on Good Friday. No, he'll have the list here. He'll go, <laughs> yeah. Fowler, right? Yeah, you, go ahead. You're in. You're in. Yeah, that's you, right. uh, you, did, you did see it later, though, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I waited until uh, after yeah, Easter. Yeah, right. Everybody in their 20s right now are going, they're going, what yeah. the hell is he talking about? Holy well, week. kids, before the advent of internet porn, we had to go to theaters <laughs> yes, you went to and movies. sit next, next to each other. The and the other, the kind, by the way, the late, great Vic Albury just died not too long ago. The other kind, the, there was the kindness I also showed to Vic. He was a twins pitcher. I borrowed him ten bucks to go see Deep Throat. So, <laughs> so I got that. I, I gave palm, alms to the poor. You know? I gave alms to the poor, and I didn't go see behind the uh, green. You can You're a modern guy. day Robin Hood. You can say what you want about Royce, but the man's a giver. <laughs> yes, he's, right. just, he's looking out for his fellow. And by the way, Vic passed away somewhere down in Florida, and he never did give me that ten bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Here is Johnny Height with a sports. Thanks, hey, Patrick. Cloudy and thirty nine degrees. No twins today. They'll pick things up again tomorrow <laughs> night in Baltimore, playing the Orioles in a game. Underway at 6.05 hour time. You know, Poor my- Gardy, though. He had a 6-4 lead. Yeah. And Manny said, Didn't they, don't they still have a rotten bullpen? And I think the answer's in. Yes, yes they yes. do. It's- this has been a Donnybrook of two pretty awful baseball <laughs> yes, teams, right. by the way. 8-6 uh, Pirates have gone back ahead in the ninth in Tiger Stadium. Their opener because they got uh, rained out yesterday. John Height and I watched the top, uh, the bottom of the first <laughs> inning in that producer room, Pat. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it Ivan Nova? Yeah. Ivan Nova started for Pittsburgh. His yeah. first 12 pitches, he threw one strike. Really? <laughs> it was really bad. But well, then the bases were loaded and he didn't give up any got runs. Got out of it. Yeah. He got out of that run and he yes. took, So he got out of two bases loaded, yep. nobody outs. Because yep. later on, he they had a base loaded, nobody out, and Victor popped up and they hit into a double place. <laughs> Just like we drew it up. Mm-hmm.
Timberwolves are in Dallas tonight to take on the Mavericks and the Vikings with a signing. Today. Jimmy Butler, by the way, uh, cleared for practice. Yes, so, for uh, okay. contact. Cleared yeah, for so contact. He might play. Uh, I don't know if he'll play Sunday, but he might play pretty soon. Tib said it might be a little while, a little mm-hmm. bit before they can get him in. But mm-hmm. uh, Vikings with a signing today. They signed wide receiver Kendall Wright. Uh, he had a good year for the Bears last season. Fifty nine passes, uh, six hundred fourteen yards. Considering who was playing quarterback with the Bears last year, I'd consider that a good year. He, uh, I wonder what they, did they get him cheaper than Jarius, or did they like him better than Jarius? Did not see any totals, as they say. Nothing on their press release about it. Jarius was only making two and a half, so. Before he played, uh, before he played with the Bears, he was with Tennessee his best year, 2013, when he caught 94 passes. So he's been around a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's a fast. News notes from today: The legislature owes about four hundred grand in legal fees for that court battle they had with Governor Dayton. Spokesperson for Senate Majority Leader Paul Gazelka confirmed the legisl- uh, legislature owes three hundred ninety-nine thousand. Pass the hat, boys. For its part of the tab, that brings the total cost of the case to more than seven hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. Dayton's already paid his bill; that was three hundred sixty-eight grand. The costly legal battle triggered by Dayton's line-item veto of the legislature's $130 million <laughs> operating budget last Wait a minute. May. Uh, the governor paid it out of his pocket. Is that how this works? Mm. Well, uh, he probably did. That's awesome. <laughs> Dayton wanted lawmakers to rework costly tax breaks and other measures. Lawmakers sued instead. Case eventually ended up with the Supreme Court, which sided with the governor in November. What did we end up doing then? Did we uh, the line item vetoes held up or what did yes, they, they, yes they they, they just did. left it the way it was. Okay. Yeah. Uh well eventually he signed another bill though to give okay. funding to the legislature. Okay. That was the main sticking point. Mm-hmm. Uh, President Trump appeared to signal the withdrawal very soon of US troops from Syria last night. Uh that came as a shock to the Pentagon and the State Department. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot to run it by him. <laughs> so we're going to turn her over. We're going to turn the whole country over to Russia then, huh? Uh, Trump told a crowd in Ohio during a speech, by the way, we're knocking the hell out of ISIS. We're coming out of Syria very soon. Let the other people take care of it now. Very soon. Very soon we're coming out. <laughs> hmm. well, End quote. They're killing all the Kurds up in the north, but what the hell. The approximately 2,000 U.S. troops inside Syria have been working alongside Syrian Democratic forces. Defense Secretary James Mattis and Secretary of State Rex Tillerson had said in the past that those troops will remain. And well, we got rid of both of them, though, so what the hell difference is They're both gone, right? Mattis is gone, too, right? Or is he still there? He's still there, isn't he? Okay, I get confused. Uh, Tillerson's gone and I Mattis. Get, it's hard to you gotta I get keep confused a checklist. who gets fired. Yes. A preliminary decision from a California Superior Court judge in L.A. could affect thousands of coffee shops, including Starbucks, 7-Eleven, and local gas stations. Shops may have to put up a warning. Tells customers there's a possible cancer risk linked to coffee. Oh, B.S. <laughs> it's California. Who came, that is up, California. With that? Who came yeah. up with that? Uh, a lawsuit first filed back in Los Angeles County Superior Court in 2010 by the nonprofit Council for Education and Research on Toxics. Targeted several companies wow. that make or sell coffee. Mm-hmm. And uh, what where, what uh, what does the FDA say about this? Do they uh, the FDA, it, it, they're not involved, I guess, because it's not, not a drug. So. That's correct. Uh, it's because of something called acrylamide, which is created when coffee beans are roasted. But uh, I recall a story that said you'd have to drink, you know, five hundred cups of coffee a day for that to have any effect. Well, you know, close. <laughs> I just I just wish that. Here's what I I go to Starbucks once in a while for the bride. You know why I like Caribou better than Starbucks? Why? Because when you order a large, you get a large. Yeah. Mm, you don't when get you a get grande? a large at Straba, uh, Starbucks, you got to order a grande. Right, yeah. I don't like to say grande. I, uh, Just I refuse, give me the big no, one. I won't do that. I'll say give me a large. Give me the big one. And then they'll repeat back, a grande, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you go Eddie Guardado. I think. Yes, I speak English, but I'm not very good at Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Just medium, large, extra large, something like that, not grande. I am Starbucks exclusively. Are you? I should be doing endorsements for them. Yeah. I, I did boycott uh, car, Caribou for a couple of weeks when they had the row the boat model. But uh, Yeah, that's no good. Coffee, but I, I went back to Because they're conveniently located. <laughs> that's really what it comes down to. It really is. A giant lottery jackpot has grown a bit bigger. The Mega Millions for tonight's drawing is now up to $521 million. Oh, shut up. Really? Uh, you get half? I'm going to stop. Yeah. Uh, the odds of winning are 302 million and one, although, ah. although it has good odds apparently better than the Powerball of winning smaller prizes. 
Uh, this no, nope, nope, right, the Mega John. Million you play. What do you pay for a ticket? Just a buck? Two bucks. Yeah, two bucks. Two bucks. Okay. The you're Powerball either going to win pay, or you're not. Powerball, you pay two bucks now too, right? Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. The uh, twenty-one or five hundred twenty-one million figure would be an annual uh, option in which payments are made over twenty-nine years. The cash option, which I think most of us would take, uh, would pay you three hundred seventeen million. I can oh, live but if that. I take the other option. And I drop dead. They have to keep paying my relatives, right? I don't think so. I don't think so. so. Yeah. I don't know. I think you should so take. So you're betting on yourself to live? Yeah. You should take the cash option if you win, Patrick. <laughs> oh, I just definitely take the yeah. cash option. But once in a while, I keep not winning because I forget to buy tickets. Yeah, that's always <laughs> a, that's <laughs> the big bug, bu- bug <laughs> problem right there. you got to buy a ticket. Because yeah. you'll that's forget true. about it in 15 seconds. <laughs> I might stop today, though. I and then with stop. you, you're going to have to remember that you did buy a ticket. <laughs> yeah, where I put it. <laughs> I hope I didn't it. put it with all my passes to the games <laughs> that I put in the secure location that I can no longer find. <laughs> or next to all that dental floss I got you into had. the Timberwolves game the other night with a pass that said Sid Hartman guest. <laughs> well, those guys have Sid to has, know you, don't Sid, they? Yeah, but you still got to have something. Yeah. But Sid had has the two gals that are with him, right? Yeah. And the so they got to get the, let them in the game too. So they got these Sid Hartman guest passes, which he kept losing. So they gave the Star Tribune ten of them, <laughs> <laughs> so that he could. So when he when they when he. Lost them, but they had a couple left over, so I, I got in as Sid Hartman guest. I think that should be on all of your media passes going <laughs> Sid forward. Hartman Sid Hartman, Hartman guest. guest going yeah. By the way, I'm 52. Is that old enough to have a couple of handlers? I'd like to have a, <laughs> I'd like to have a couple of handlers looking after me. Hey now. That's, uh, yeah, these uh, nice gals do. That, and I keep telling them. You're taking notes, right? Mm-hmm. We want the book. We're going to do the book. Right. We last we're coming enough, we're right to do the you. book. <laughs> the truth. The sequel to Sid's book. The truth. Uh, we'll be back. Johnny, I just tweeted this out. Guardy yeah. needs a couple guys on that bullpen who can throw the fire out of the ball, man. Uh, <laughs> six four lead in the seventh or eighth, and now they're behind ten to six. Guardy looks good, by the way. Beat. Oh, he looks great. Yeah, but that'll change. Yeah, that bullpen could <laughs> that bullpen could get the beer going back in that uh, clubhouse of his with the little. Guardy always had that little office and fret refreshment down there on the in the bottom drawer. Good like, man. Uh, <laughs> and uh, if he if he might need a few with this uh, bullpen. Now, does he have the whole band back together? Because I know Bazio is his pitching coach. The pitching coach. Andy's the bullpen coach. Gotcha. Rick Anderson, and then he's got uh, Steve Little as the bench coach, and Jeff Vavra is the substitute. They get you know everybody's got like two bench coaches now. How well got... did that work out here? What those guys with him? Well, they won. It worked out. You know what? It worked out pretty good when they had good pitching. Exactly. <laughs> Once exactly. they had terrible pitching, it didn't work out very well. <laughs> 37-year-old man, police say, tried to destroy the Golden Arches at a McDonald's restaurant in Oregon after workers refused to make him 30 double cheeseburgers is now facing charges. They the, refused to make him 30 doubles? That's correct. He Was wouldn't it, pay in advance or what? The News Review reports police arrested Jed- Jebediah Ezekiel Fulton. Oh, yeah. Wow. He, he came from Tennessee originally. Yeah, but I, Ezekiel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On suspicion of second-degree disorderly conduct, second-degree criminal trespass, second-degree criminal mischief, and harassment. Authorities say Fulton became upset when McDonald's in the western Oregon town of Sutherland declined to make his order. Police say at that point, he went and destroyed a banner, then walked outside and started attacking the actual golden arches at the restaurant. I, I might be on his side. Why did they refuse this uh, man's uh, service? You know, that's a good question. There's no uh, indication they might of have, why. Uh, they might have, maybe they wanted to see the cash. Or something. Was he a hobo? Well, mm-hmm. uh, the Sutherland Police Department said uh, also after... Uh, They're familiar with him? Tried to, yes, and tried to destroy oh. stuff. He pulled out a handgun and, and threatened oh. some people, and that's when... That's oh. taken it a bit, a yeah. bit far. Do you, know the, do you know the movie that officially ended Michael Keaton's career and he will never appear again? Um, Did you see the Ray Kroc movie? No, I didn't. What a piece of crap. Was it pretty bad? The founder. I, somehow, what made you think of that? For somehow, I McDonald's. had to go to a oh, movie. Okay. I had to go to a movie one afternoon. I had nothing to do. Walked out 40 minutes. Wow. See you later. Was it was God awful. Was that recent? Yeah, it was the last within the last year. It was after the, the founder. One, right? He was in that Vince Flynn book movie, wasn't he? 
yeah. what was the movie with uh, Vince's uh, book? I can't think of the name of it. Yeah, but he uh, well he was all this is so this is after his comeback one the one where that won all the awards. Oh yeah, yeah. the bird, uh, the Birdman, Birdman. Bird, bird after was that. it Birdman? Birdman. I never did see that one. That was a strange, it strange was, movie. It was interesting. It wasn't based on fact. <laughs> American <laughs> Assassin. Right. Thank you, Christopher. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, we was talked- he in that one too? Yes, Michael yeah, Keaton. That was could in. have been the name of his movie: the assassination <laughs> of film. Oh God, it was terrible. Uh, we talked uh, earlier on GL about in the Philippines. Uh, every year they do this; they actually crucify. Yes, they do seven people on Good Friday, not kill them. Do they take volunteers? Or well, they just wait a minute. They, they, they don't hang asking. them up no, with they nails. Put them in nails. Do they? Yeah, with, with nails. Are you kidding yeah. me? No, man. Uh, and, that guy uh, got even more points than I do for not going to behind the green. Oh yeah. The, uh, uh, that's an automatic in, right? Yeah, all right. You get you're crucified, in. you're in. Front I'm, of the line, you're yeah. on the guest list. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you guys uh, framed it that way because uh, my follow-up to the what I had earlier, a Philippine man who has been nailed to a cross every Easter for the past 32 years. Oh, what a mm-hmm. show-off. In that good, good <laughs> Friday reenactment. He's already got the holes now. That's, well, that, that's the point of the story. He says he no longer feels any pain from his wounds. Mm-hmm. 58-year-old Ruben Anaje again portrayed Christ today in the traditional religious rite in Kutad Village, from the uh, about 76 miles from the capital of Manila. Uh, he said, after the ritual today, I, in the past, I went home injured and limping, but this year... I feel so great. Yeah, they put him in the feet, too, don't they? Yep, oh, feet and man. hands. Oh. He said he believes his strong Catholic... So it's like getting his ear pierced, mm-hmm. then he's got the same spot. Mm-hmm. He said he believed his strong Catholic faith helped him avoid pain. <laughs> uh, he said, referring to God, I feel like he's telling me to go ahead, keep it up. Uh, Easter is a festival marking the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ, of course, and about 80% of the folks in the Philippines are Catholic. Although the Muslims are making inroads down in the south, there's uh, there's some uh, rebels down there trying to take over. Here's uh, here was my question earlier when we read this story. There are actors who play Roman soldiers who actually hammer the two inch nails. Nope, 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 no. Nope. Who, who who who's going to do that? Who's How are you going to break man? through that cartilage and bone? Oh, that'd be so gross. Yeah, no, thank you. They do do that. The nails are soaked in alcohol. If that makes you feel any better, so that uh, they're sterile. I know there's a lot of guilt uh, in the Holy Roman Church at this time of year, but that taking it too far. I think. Well, the church- can you live your life though completely off the rails for the rest of the year if you're the guy that gets yes. nailed to that cross every year you'd virtually do any you could go around killing guys every well, day well, I wouldn't go that and you'd far. still get in you're still on the guest list I, plus might one. Be a bit much. I don't think you could commit major crimes oh. but yeah i think you can you know you know window peep do you something. window peep? <laughs> what about what about using i have a window peep. you can window peep do you think you'd get from negotiation man or though. women you can window peep anything you want would the big man give you permission to use his name in vain Willy nilly, year God, round. I hope, God, I hope so. <laughs> you just did right there. Yes. <laughs> so wait a minute. Doesn't this then basically render confession obsolete in this particular parish? Well, this parish, though, the Catholic Church in the Philippines, uh, they're not on with the ritual. They, they, they don't want any. Oh, do they're not it. down oh, with okay. it. They're not. They're not on with. This it. is yeah, not oh, sanctioned. <laughs> right, <laughs> not sanctioned by the church. Uh, the folks think that uh, the penance cleanses sins, cures illnesses, and even leads to wishes so, coming true. Uh, to bring it back on brand, this is like the guy selling jerseys outside of the stadium. <laughs> yes, right. These are MLB you know? jerseys. Yeah, these are not, they're the not approved. Ones. They're cheaper. Yeah. They're not the same material. Boom. Boom. Back you know, on uh, brand. Yeah. Kenny, you know what else they're selling? They're selling the, the Vikings 2017 <laughs> NFC champion t-shirts yes. that they had to print up that's in right, Philadelphia. Right. That's right. I, uh, well, I hope he makes it, man. Well, he's I, uh, he's feels great, and he's done it thirty two okay. years. Now, I just so. hope he makes it to the heavenly Oh, to heaven! Kenny yeah, says, "What a show off!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. this, this was we all, all right. not all of us. Kenny didn't grow up Catholic. But Did this it was rain this. at three o'clock? Did the thunder roll in? Oh, I, I forgot the chat. I didn't the see any, although it is cloudy. Yeah, it's I bet cloudy. it did. I Scariest did. day of the year when I was growing up, man. Oh God! Yes. Oh, it scared the hell out of me mm-hmm. when I was a kid. I spent a lot of time on Good Friday uh, pretending like I was sick so we could go look at the duck ponds while my, <laughs> my mother and brother had to hang out in there. Now remember, you've got a sore throat and a yes. cough. <laughs> Again this year. Right. All right, we'll be back.
Manny Hill on the ride. We have uh, your guy, Brandon Lang, coming yes. up at 4.15. Scott Miller will join us at 5 o'clock. I'm really excited. He's got a new book out, and uh, Scott, of course, covers baseball for Yahoo Sports. I think so. Correct? Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. he's a good buddy of Patrick, so he'll be talking some ball. And speaking of baseball, this Pittsburgh-Detroit game that's oh been gosh. <laughs> going on... It started at noon, correct? Because I, I was watching so, yeah. it before GL started in the Going producers' on four room. hours here. So uh, it's ten to eight. I, I must. It must have just ended because they just went that, to commercial break. Either that, or it's another pitching change. Because this has Maybe. been a pillow fight of crap uh, in, uh, in in what's going to probably be two of the worst. I don't teams know if in you baseball. saw earlier in the game. Me and me and Pat were in the uh, the prep room watching. Yep. It might have been like the fourth or fifth inning or something. Typical Guardy moment. Uh oh. Loaded the bases. Nobody out. Yep. Didn't score. Oh. So yeah. So we've been we've been monitoring closely Detroit and Pittsburgh on MLB Network. Uh, the ride with Royce will come up after this top of the hour break here on fifteen hundred ESPN KSTP Saint Paul Minneapolis. <laughs>